Okay, I have uh, one thirty, so we'll go ahead and begin the October uh, traffic committee meeting. I'm the chair, Ryan Carr, and uh, we will review the minutes once we address all of this month's items. The first item on the agenda is a request for crosswalks at Helstern Middle School by Alan Athey and the Springdale School District. Uh, if you would, if y'all would like to present, uh, you're more than welcome to right now. Title 27, Transportation 27-51-213. To sum up that code, it states that you need a uh, sign stating that you are entering a school zone 300 feet in front of the school zone, a uh, sign stating that you are in a school zone, and a sign that says that you are exiting a school zone 300 feet outside of it. We're updated to date on that title on that law, um, but those resources that you have provided with us aren't currently working. And um, when drivers are driving down the school speed zone, uh, so we would like to add flash on the school speed zone signs to alert drivers when they have um, entered the school speed zone, like the signs at Walker Elementary and George Junior High, Harbor High School, and many other schools. To help you further understand how these lights work, xwalking.com says the flashing lights are activated by a time timer and typically operate one hour before and after school when pedestrians, foot traffic, and vehicles mix. Because the only um, the timers, the lights flash only when students are present. Uh, drivers are more likely to notice and slow down. By putting up these flashing lights. Uh, Drivers will be able to notice when they enter and exit a school zone and helping reduce the injuries caused in a school zone accident and helping to keep our school zones safer. While also eliminating the farthest west side crosswalk, we would like to add a push button crosswalk on our most used crosswalk, which enters to the seventh grade side pickup line. Uh, we understand that it is the most expensive solution but we feel that it is the most beneficial and effective one, and we are fully committed to helping you write grants and get grants uh, to help any of the schools on Harbor Avenue. Whenever I go to football in the morning, I can see kids walking over the crosswalk, and it is, as what I can see, it is, well, they're walking over, ar across the crosswalk in pretty much darkness, and there are no signs or like the push buttons that we want uh, and this just adds to the danger of cr crosswalks to our the way to our way to school without adults present oh yeah we would like to also bring up crosswalks not being able not being up to date uh, we recommend 3d type drawing to alert drivers um, which are right in front of you So you can understand what the sidewalks look like. We understand that these uh, solutions will be costly, but we are fully willing to help write grants, as we said earlier. Um, and by putting these up, it'll help Harbor Avenue, the whole strip of schools, to be safer and to keep 
our students safer. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Do you have any questions? Um, we'll go into discussion. We might have some questions as we uh, discuss this, but thank you very much for that presentation. That was really good. I just wanted to say one thing. On the 3D crosswalks, um, we've spoke with, we, they talked to the art teacher and to a couple other people. So all that we would need the city to do is paint the reflective part like you would normally paint the crosswalk. And then the students could actually go out and mark it and make it the 3D like you see on the picture. So it wouldn't require any extra except for painting it like it needs to be done. So. Okay. Where is that crosswalk? This crosswalk? Or where, where is it? Right. Uh, where do they want it? The one it is on, it's kind of hard to see on here, but it is. It's right, crossing harbor. Crossing harbor right there. You can see the uh, ADA ramp on this side, right? here I believe and then there's it's really faded in this image but there is a crosswalk that's supposed to cross there okay. and uh, correct me if I'm wrong but that's the one that you want to keep and the one you want to eliminate is uh, up here even harder to see this crosswalk in front of the fire station yes sir okay so um, to get in the nuts and bolts of it um, the one on the east is monitored every morning and um, when school's out so that we definitely want to keep that one mm -hmm. and the one on the west is the one that we want to eliminate but it doesn't get used very much and also to clarify um the school zones if you know in open discussion i don't know if you guys can pay for that or if we need to pay for it to get flashing lights on the school zones we would need to know where to put them exactly where it starts and where it stops does that make sense yes so you're requesting school zone signs for approaching school zone, you've entered the school zone, and leaving the school zone. Um, yes, and there'd also be a better solution to not spending so much money on constantly adding flashing lights. If you add a flashing light at the beginning where Young is, and then you add another flashing light at where Helstrom is, and that would like give the whole school zone, that whole um, street, to mm -hmm. know people that it's a school zone in that time. It's a large school zone. Yeah. Schools there. Yes. Um, Eric, uh, for what we typically do on school zones, I know this one's kind of a special case since it is three different schools uh, through here. Um, I kind of wonder what what options do we have? Uh, flashing lights, school zone, entering school zone. Are those things that we can? Well, we can do it. Red, red, their department puts up the flashing signs. I like the last idea because the school zone is so long, mm -hmm. you know, just have one at the beginning and on both sides, east and west. Okay. Yeah. One one sign at the beginning, both east and west, when you're entering the school zone. Yeah. When you end, it's just a sign that says, uh, uh, you know, 30 miles an hour. Or typically, it just goes back to whatever the posted speed is, and that indicates the end of the school zone. Okay. All right. Um, Uh, but I don't know how much those flashing signs are. You know, we were told they're expensive. Around ten thousand dollars. I it, don't know if that's correct. It all depends on what signs we're talking about. If it's a push button crosswalk, they run about eight thousand feet. Uh, one for each side, so that's about seventeen thousand for the push button crosswalk. Um, the flashing lights, I think they run about twenty five hundred each. Right. The one that's um, the so code is crossing. Zone, beginning of the school yeah. zone. Yeah. So just flashing the lights. The ones that have batteries and solar, right. I think they're about 2500 Okay. So and we what, maintain 22, those. $22,000, $23,000? Um, I don't know where the money come from. Labor. Well, I think you all had, had bought the last ones, yeah. and we, we helped it's with solid. it, uh, helped install them. Right. I think that's the way it's been, is you all purchased them, and we, we helped install them and, okay. and whatnot. So. So we're asking you to purchase them. I'll have to run that by my boss. <laughs> I was going to ask a question. Are there any school zone signs out there currently? Anything besides uh, the pavement markings that are on the road? Yes, there are. Okay. It's current up to date with the rest of the city. 
but the ones, the school zone signs that are out there now do not have flashing lights on them. No, not like the ones on like on Powell. And okay. I'm sure there's some other in some other places. Where... Okay. We have taken pictures of the whole school zone area and the different spots, and we do have photos of that that we can send, if that's helpful at all. Yes, um, that would so be very helpful yeah, for our consideration. Yeah, can have them put them together and send them to you. Okay. Because there's the flashing light, there's one at Sperber when you enter the Harbor School Zone, but when you come around the corner between Young and Helstern, there's not a flashing one anywhere. It's, it's on the ground and there's signs, correct? Correct. Both. But no flashing signs. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, as far as the push button crosswalk, that with that being more of an investment, we will have to pass that along. Um, is there any uh, uh, discussions for or against having a push button crosswalk and flashing beacons at the school zone entry from the traffic committee? Okay, hearing none, we'll go ahead and move it forward for a budget discussion to see if that is something we can do and that is something we will address in next the next month's minutes as well. Um, as for as far as the 3D crosswalk, Eric, do you know if that would be if they could outline it for us? Is that something that would be feasible that we go in and? Well, I'm going to put down a new crosswalk, like hot tape instead of paint. It'll last longer. And if they want to, I, I don't know who. I don't care if they want to paint it and outline it, make it look like it's 3D like that. But okay. I don't know if that's my decision. Right. But if it is, go ahead. Well, if y'all will allow them to build a 3D crosswalk, our maintenance department, we could come out and help. And with y'all's help with the traffic to make sure it's all safe, we could uh, facilitate that with your permission. Yeah. Well, we can go out. You need us to put down the reflective part, so we can go down and put that out first so it's yeah. new and bright. Yeah. And then as far as the rest of it, I, I don't know if that's my decision. Right. Probably Aunt Brian. Do you all see a traffic problem with having a 3D crosswalk uh, legal issue with it? Do you see anything there? If it looked like that, it'd make me slow down. But, yeah, yeah. This is something that we have been talking about for a while. I know our planning department is also interested in the concept of 3D crosswalks. Um, we have not implemented them anywhere thus far, uh, but we can we can pass it along. Is there any any concerns as far as the committee goes to say we do not want this? I don't have any. Okay. I don't either, so we will pass that along too to see what we can do as far as getting a 3D crosswalk. But if y'all are willing to help, it sounds like we are open to it. Excellent. We all got to thank Excellent. Um, I do have questions about the crosswalks that cross our driveway. Um, do you guys maintain those, or should we maintain them? You do. Private we, property, I can't do it. Okay. All right, so we'll repaint those. We'll, we'll get that taken care of. Uh, <coughs> Melania does the signs, and uh, there's another maintenance person at the school, Jerry McCoy, that he used to work for Public Works, and he knows about crosswalks. And yeah, know how to do it, so. okay. Okay, was there uh, any other questions or requests? Okay, we'll pass those along and address those in next month's minutes. Uh, we will also send out uh, a copy of all those too to everyone. Thank you. So thank, thank, you. thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Excellent job, guys. I have one other uh, issue on uh, at Bayari yes. that, I, that I would like to uh, just ask about. Okay. I think in previous meeting, we decided to make a turning lane in front of Bayari and that was approved, and I was wondering if that was still on the schedule or if it got pushed back. When was that? About six, eight months ago, yeah. I remember it being approved to be on the schedule, but I don't know where that went. Six, eight months ago, that would have been, I don't even know if I was started yet, so I don't, I don't okay. know. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, might I, have been the, it might have been the other Eric, so. It, it, it might have been, it might have been right in that transition time, so. Right. Turn so on we, Bayari in front of the school. 
we kind of had a design kind of like the same design in front of Lee and Westwood for a turning lane. Yeah, they had a, uh, you know, three lanes available to work with. I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen the design. So three lanes there. I didn't know they had a turn lane. In. They don't. It's not there currently. I mean, I didn't know it was wide enough. For three yes, lanes. I think we looked previously and it is wide enough to fit okay. the third turning lane. The yeah. request was from, was it Sweetwater Ranch or was it uh, Dodd? It, it was from Dodd um, down to where it narrows, just the other side of the school, right in that area somewhere. Right there's where it narrows. So at the end of the school property. But the request was, if you're going north, the far east lane be the turning lane up into the very front of the building. Does that make sense? Up to right here? Yeah. For the east lane, and then you wanted a center turn lane. A center, center turn lane. lane from there out, yeah. From there out. Center turn lane from the entrance all the way to Dodd. Yeah. Okay. We'll pull those minutes, too, to make sure that, that is what was approved, too. Okay. But that's what I remember from that. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. I think I got a drawing. They may be in your minutes. I'm yeah. not sure, but I could... If I get your email, I can email yeah, the drawing would be great. The drawing. Or I could ask Carl to do it again. Okay. Yeah, I'll take care of it. <laughs> thank you, sir. All right, that's all I had. All right, thank you, Alan. No, I'm sorry, I got one more thing. Oh, 40th no, Street. you already said. No. <laughs> 40th Street expansion, is that on schedule? Uh, that we're T. T. Smith? Uh, looking to bid that before the end of the year for construction, then it'll be anticipated start date, beginning of 2021. It'll last about one year. Okay. Perfect. So that thank is you. still plain to go. So right. thank you. Okay, the next item on the list is um, request for no parking sign to be placed across from 304 South Main Street by Raymond Richmond. Is Raymond here today? Yes, sir. How are we doing? It's First time doing that, it's, a, yeah, it's just a personal residence. Um, I'm right across from the art center over there um, on Main Street here, if you can pull that up probably. You know, they park right across from my driveway when they've got the, you know, the backside parking lot and the, of the full street. And I've got some photos here, I wasn't sure how to submit them prior. Um, I went anything. by and looked at it. Uh, you're talking about on Main Street, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't need your photo. So right okay. across from his house, there's a, another house with the driveway, and then between that driveway and the stop sign, it's probably 20 or 25 feet, and there's not supposed to be any parking from, you know, within 20 feet of a stop sign anyway. Right. So I can yep. put up a no, no parking here to corner there. Okay. Yeah, that's when it's really messed when they park all the way down there and you're trying to back my truck out of there, and, and they, it's, yeah, it's almost impossible. There anyway, so I don't have a problem with that. Okay, I okay. Can put, I can put a no parking here to corner there. Uh, you know, normally I might say there was a problem just because if they were trying to back out of your driveway I think you can't stop people from parking right. but that's that's illegal anyway so. oh okay yeah that's understood to be no yep. parking it's there illegal regardless the okay so that, that's all that's good. it all right I'll appreciate it, it. Thank thanks you. sir yeah. okay I know uh item number four I don't think Jonathan is here today but uh the Dick Smith parking street issue I believe that was handled uh, Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, the no parking on Dick Smith on that north segment. Is that the private property yes. on yes. the end? Yeah, we, yeah that, part of the problem was nobody knew that was private property, and I think patrol got sent out there and wasn't aware that's private property and said, hey, there's nothing we can do. We patrol the know can do something. I don't know if, I know somebody brought up about putting signs down there. We did. But I, that's done. Put up two. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, request for no outlet sign on Yeager Road. Melissa Autry, is Melissa here? Okay. Uh, uh, we'll just continue down for people that are attending right now. Uh, request for no truck sign at the corner of Apple Meadows and Old Wire Road. Is there somebody here to present that? There's not a name on there. Okay. We'll come back to that one. Uh, request for cross traffic signage at Dodd Avenue by Melissa Scalf. Melissa, no, okay. Um, Jim's not here. 
discussion of traffic signals at the intersections of Don Tyson and 48th Street by Ken Rotzel. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Is Ken it's, here? It's Rotzel. I know him, but he's not here. Okay, we'll continue that one later. Uh, that brings us to several discussions about speeding. Um, before I continue, I'm going to go ahead and lightly touch on our uh, current traffic calming policy because I feel that this will apply to several of the concerns that are brought to us. I think we have seven uh, speeding concerns. So I'll go over what our typical traffic calming policy is. Um, when an issue is brought to us, we have different options for traffic calming measures. Uh, typically, when it's brought to us the first time, we incorporate what's called level one, uh, uh, which is education and awareness. That typically involves discussions, which is what's happening here right now, uh, radar trailer for uh, gathering speed data, uh, getting speed patrol out there for enforcement, and perhaps signage. If there is, if the committee feels like signage will solve the problem and not create more of a sign pollution issue. Um, to get to level two street changes, which are high visibility crosswalks and narrowing lanes, or level three, which involve speed tables, uh, raised crosswalks, full closures, half closures, uh, bump outs from the curb, things like that, that would involve uh, more of a traffic study to be performed. Um, for traffic study, a lot of the information that we get from our uh, speed counters and vehicle counters can be incorporated into that. It's not a full traffic study. It's just enough for us to reflect on the data that we do gather. From there, we can typically, typically make a decision on what to do. Um, but to get to level two or three measures, we have a point system. Um, there's different criteria like speed, uh, how you get so many points uh, if it's over if the 80th, 85th percentile speed or 85% of people travel at or below this speed, you get so many points for that. If they're going over volume, the amount of cars and traffic that are on the street, you get so many points for that, whether or not it has sidewalks, whether or not there was traffic accidents, and whether or not it's, uh, the road is involved in kids crossing to go to school are all uh, incorporated into level two or three measures. So. Given that we don't have the data at this time for the items that are brought to us, chances are a majority of what we're going to suggest for each of these items involve uh, putting a speed trailer out there to gather data and then we'll bring that up at uh, later traffic committees. Uh, given the backlog of uh, places that have requested the speed trailer, we don't know if we can get to all these by next month or even two months down, down the road. Uh, to actually count traffic and gather data, it needs to be during the school year. So we've gotten requests throughout the summer. We're finally getting to putting the speed trailer out of e at each of these locations, so it might take us some time. But we will uh, plan to most likely put it out unless uh, another agreement can be reached uh, for each of these speeding concerns. So saying that, we will uh, begin going through these one by one. Uh, discussion of speeding on Maple Drive by Jennifer Matsubara, if I'm pronouncing that uh, wrong, I apologize. Is Jennifer here? Not here. Is Lisa Eek here? Eck. Eck, okay. Speeding on Turner. Good afternoon. I am Lisa Eckie. I serve as Justice of the Peace on the Washington County Quorum Court. I'd first off like to say thank you to the Honorable Mayor Doug Sprouse and City Councilwoman Amelia Williams for putting me on the agenda today. Um, also, today is Walk to School or Ride Your Bike to School Day. And my neighbors, my constituents, my friends along Turner Avenue and Lakeview would love to do that. However, there is an urgent need to mitigate the aggressiveness in which the motorists are traveling off of Turner down to Lakeview 
using it as a bypass to 71B. The posted sign is 30 miles per hour. Is it, a re it is a residential area. Motorists are traveling upwards of 45 to 65, even 70 miles an hour, dragging through that street. As you can see from Don Tyson, or from 412 Robinson, all the way through to Don Tyson, there's not a single stop. Then from Don Tyson to Lake View, there isn't a stop sign and there isn't a stop light. Thus the reason why motorists are using Turner Street as a bypass to 71B. It is also used by, I don't even know what demographic age they, I mean, they're drag racing up the hill. It is so dangerous for those living in here. They're also using it as a loop going up the hill as fast as they can down to Lakeview, around to Powell, and then back up again. And there's trucks that follow each other up and down that street. Now, Turner Street also has a sidewalk going down just on one side, going down to Lakeview. You cross Lakeview and there's Lake Fayetteville. It is the Greenway for cyclists and the entry point for a lot of families walking to the lake. And I point that out because it is, is an area that we would want to keep safe. I do have letters and I have emails from my neighbors. All stakeholders were invited to participate in this discussion. We are concerned. Right now we don't have any fatalities. We've been out on the sidewalk. My husband Roger was talking to our neighbors. There were two uh, professors from the U of A strolling their daughter when somebody comes down uh, the hill off of Lakeview was on their phone. They hit the curb from me to you right in front of where they were standing, spun around, and the car ended up in our neighbor's yard. We have people on Turner further up the street that have had to replace their mailbox twice because people have just, for no reason, it's just a straight drive. They hit in there. Uh, the Lafers that live off of Lakeview and Turner, he has replaced his expensive mailbox three times. This is the fourth one that he has, and he says it's a cheapo from Lowe's. If you will look at the grade, the road grade on Lakeview, going up the hill to Bogey, you can see that the street pitches to the right. He says you can hear it when they bottom out at the intersection of Turner and Lakeview, going 65 miles an hour, it pitches to the right, and they end up in his front yard knocking over his mailbox. There is his house right there. Right, this house? Uh, yes. Okay. So there's the corner, and you can see the pitch it veers to the right, and they end up in his yard. Now, I'm glad you have these pictures because I went ahead and I took pictures. We didn't, the neighbors in our discussion, we did not want to pigeonhole the traffic committee into one option. I believe that it is the city council, the mayor, your responsibility to keep us safe. You all know what's best. We will not tell you how to do your job, but we will. We came to consensus, and we feel that if the traffic can slow down and a four-way stop sign be placed at Henson, where it's right in front of the church, it is the only four-way stop sign area. What that would do is create a barrier to those aggressive drivers. They can't just go straight through. And the reason they're going straight through is because if you go to 71 off a fairway circle, there's a light. 
and they have to wait. They don't want to do that. A four-way stop sign, in our opinion, would be the less, least expensive measure to mitigate this, these aggressive drivers from speeding off of Turner. The second request that we are making, as you can see off of Lakeview and Turner, it is an entry point to the lake. There's only one sidewalk on the east side of Turner. There's not one on the west side. You can see that there's a stop sign. I thought there was no lake access from. No, there is. I mean, if you go, it's right. Well, there's no lake access as far as motorists are concerned, but right there where you see the white sign right. and the fence going down, that is where the cyclists and the uh, pedestrians enter to go to the lake. It's right there. Right. So what we're asking for is to be considered like all the other areas in Springdale that have a pedestrian cyclist walkway protecting them when they do cross the street. Right now, we're not protected. I have uh, a letter here from my neighbor across the street. It's Gil and Sarah Camo, and he's a cyclist. He says, uh, we live very close proximity to Lake Fayetteville and also the Razorback Greenway. So there is a high volume of runners, cyclists, and families with baby strollers which justify the needs to enforce the current speed limit. And he is, he says, I've gotten, I have almost gotten hit three times just waiting to cross that area. Just right there. You have to be very cognizant of people speeding down from Lakeview off of that four-way stop sign or three-way stop from Bogey and Lakeview coming down because they are going to sail through there. You might look both ways, nobody's coming, and by the time you take three, four steps, here comes somebody flying down the hill. We haven't had any fatalities and it's getting out of hand and I'd like to keep it that way. I know my neighbors all concerned, they're stated, you know what, it's just a matter of time. I said, don't you dare say that because it's not going to happen. We're going to make sure that it doesn't happen. I mean, we have a lot of babies, mothers strolling babies, babies learning to walk. They see a truck, truck, and they take off. And their mother's like, be careful. This is a residential area. It is not intended to be a ra drag racing street. And you know, going around the lake, it's the same thing off Lakeview going to Powell. We're very concerned very concerned. I was he last time I was here was when Councilman Colby Fulfer put forth the pro-life resolution for Springdale, making us a pro-life city. I was here and I defended the resolution. I'm thankful that it passed. I'd like for us to continue to value and be pro-life at all stages here in Springdale. I cannot emphasize enough, I don't want a fatality on our street because there's nothing, we didn't do anything. My neighbor Sarah said, I have been to three committee meetings with no communication after the meeting. I'm left feeling dismissed and unheard. I am frustrated. I said, I'm sorry that that was your experience. I'm sure that that was not their intention. I said, let me see if I can follow up on that. And so that is why I'm here. They are my constituents. I am their justice of the peace. Amelia Williams is our city councilwoman. I am her JP. We want to protect the lives of our citizens. And the reason why we live here is because it's quiet and it's peaceful. So I invite you all to just, you can do a feasibility study, you can do a time of day study. It's not gonna change the fact of what we experience. And we know that a simple fix, one stop sign with flashing lights, stop, would 
mitigate the aggressive motorists just flying through there. I don't think they're cognizant. I really don't. So that's all I have to say, and I hope you um, take into consideration and act quickly because there is an urgent need. Now, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Once again, this is an urgent need. Any questions? I have a question. Uh, I don't know who makes the decision to put up stop signs, but just to put them up to stop traffic is actually illegal. I mean, it's not that it hasn't been done, it has, and I'm sure it can be done in this case, but that's the way the city is. So putting up a stop sign is illegal, is that what you're saying? To, for the sole purpose of slowing down traffic. Well, it's not just to slow down traffic, it's to protect the lives of those people walking up and down the sidewalk. I'm, I'm, I'm not disagreeing, and I agree, I'm just saying, if, if you just went by that, it's, it's uh, Well, you can justify. Supposed, you're not supposed to do it, it's all Okay, so what is the purpose of a stop sign? Well, you would do a traffic study, and then you just, streets are like, on this, on this signal lights, where they stay green at night, all one way, you know, they don't stop and turn red just to slow down traffic. If no one's coming a different direction, so if you, like you said, there's no real place to put a four-way stop there, it's because traffic. There's no cross traffic. Well, there is a cross traffic at uh, Henson and and Turner. Cars. You have you have a neighborhood trying to come out this way and this way, and you have a church. Yeah, I, I'm. No, I, I understand, not, and I'm not being combative. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be argumentative. But I'm not. I just wanted to let you. That's why there's not a stop sign there now. If the traffic committee decides to put one there, I obviously don't have a problem with it. I'm just saying that's probably why it's not there now. I understood. And that's good to know because I need to go back and tell my neighbors exactly what the feedback was. So we're not trying to control the speed. Obviously, it can't be controlled, even with the presence of law enforcement right there. Motorists are going to do whatever motorists want to do. My whole intention coming before you today is to protect the lives of those people living off of Turner and those that use um, the sidewalk to access Lake Fayetteville and the Greenbelt. I don't want anybody's death to occur on that street. And so if we can do what we can do, the pedestrian um, crossing, is that too much to ask for? That's something we're going to take a look at. Uh, I have several questions. First of all, do you have all the information and the signed petitions from the residents that uh, you, can, you can give us so we can include in the minutes? I don't have the signed petitions because I didn't petition them. Okay. But I just have one actually just gave me uh, this and the others were in email. Okay. So I can send that to you? Yes, please. We'll want all the emails sent to us. Those can be sent to Megan. We can uh, I will do that. give you her email so you can forward all those to so her. So how, how, how feasible is our request? Um, that's something that we're going to have to look at. Um, another question I had was where did you want the four-way stop? Was that? The four-way was off of Henson, Henson. and Turner okay. because it is the only uh, through traffic on both sides. The others, there's a T. If you go up to Black Oak, it's a T. Um, so it'd be a three-way, which going up. You could do it off of um, Andrew. Yeah, I saw that one too. But yeah. the thing is, coming down the hill in uh, inclement weather, icy snow, it, you're going to cause some problems right there. And it's going to create traffic. When you're going up and then coming down and there it is you're you're going to create traffic so um and not only that my neighbor one of them um craig is a retired traffic engineer from fort collins colorado and talking to everybody he says they can do a time of day study they can do this study but the best thing to do is put up a four-way stop sign right there at henson and you can look at the distance from henson to Lakeview and Henson on up to Don Tyson. So. Okay. We will uh, take a look at the feasibility of that. It's like Eric said, for the sole purpose of slowing down traffic. It's 
we, we don't see that. That is not something that we typically do. However, I do know if it's for traffic related purposes, such as what we usually see is stop signs and four-way stops when minor collectors intersect. I don't think uh, Henson is a minor collector in this case, but typically, typically when there's enough traffic to warrant a stop sign, one is put in. As in, two stop signs are creating backups and it's hindering traffic flow through the area is something that we would consider. We'll still take a look at intersections up and down through here to see if that's possible, uh, but I can't guarantee anything will be done. Well, let me ask you this, and what, what would your recommendation be? Um, as far as traffic through there, it's like I mentioned before with the level one measures, we can continue enforcement. If you know when people are, like you said, drag racing or speeding through there, if there's a particular time of day, we would like to know so we can patrol that area. Um, it is patrolled that, now. Okay. Um, law enforcement sits at the Baptist Church. It used to be, it's now the Epic Church. We even invited them to sit in right next to our yard. And I said, you will make your quota for the whole year. And when we first moved here back in 2002, they did stay there, but then they moved to the church. But that's only first thing in the morning. In the afternoon, people going home, they're not there. The presence there. Sure, the presence of law enforcement does slow traffic down somewhat, mm -hmm. but it has to be there all the time. Even, you know, even us out in the yard saying slow down, they tell us you're number one <laughs> and we say thank you very much you know or they slow down right where we are and then they just speed on through those aren't residents those aren't people that live and care about that area right so what about the access to to the lake within the green uh, belt is there anything we can do there that's something we'll take a look at um what we what i would like to see uh, and this is open for discussion too is maybe getting some traffic counts, particularly on the lake access road. We have some, we have these tubes that count traffic. They sure. count bicyclists. So they separate those from uh, vehicular traffic. Mm -hmm. um, if the committee is willing to have those be put up there, we can see what type of pedestrians and bicyclists are going through there. They, they don't count pedestrians very well is is the number of bicyclists and pedestrians is it more pedestrians or more bicyclists or about even um definitely more pedestrians or families uh strollers but you do still have cyclists i know that um several cyclists are now going through the neighborhood cutting across to powell and trying to get on through there because the traffic flow is not as heavy um, off Powell, but that requires you to go through the neighborhood and then down a way to cut off there. But we still have cyclists, every, I mean, you just see them every day going back and forth. And little kids, you know, going to the lake with their bikes and their parents following okay. them. Um, I know our traffic counters can separate bicyclists, but I think it might be planning that has an infrared trail counter that might be uh, applicable to the situation. We will check and see if that is available for us to use because that will separate pedestrians from bicyclists. We can get mm -hmm. both counts, uh, people with strollers, cars, it separates all those. Uh, and now that the summer's over, it's going to go down compared to what it was before. Right, right. Are you just talking about a crosswalk? Pardon? Are you just talking about a crosswalk from Turner to? Lake access side? Just that we're from Lakeview, okay, yeah. we're Turner and, and Lakeview, just, just across that area. There's not even. Just a crosswalk. There's not even a crosswalk. No, is that there's not one now, yeah. Well, that plus, you know, hey. The signs for it. Yes, there, there are people, and you need to be cognizant of those crossing this area because right now they're not. Is there a sidewalk on Turner right there? There it, is it, a it sidewalk does, on yeah. the east side of Turner. There's not one on the west side. Once you get to Henson. Oh, uh, it just stops right there. It, yeah, it, it, it just Lakeview. stops. Yeah, yeah we'd and have to make this continuous sidewalk typically, For right? a short, yeah, for a short distance Sure, there so you see where cross, it, it turns, yeah, right. and then you have to come down like this to cross the street. Yeah. 
right there is very, very dangerous. I'm running for re-election, and my husband and I were trying to put up a sign right there on um, Charlotte Charleston's corner and Mr. Mustang, if his mother only knew what he was doing with his new car, I mean, he just floored it. And we went, oh my goodness. And this just happened last Sunday. Well, I, I, you know, yeah, and we're I, going, um, I believe, yeah, it's I insane. I actually live on Fairway, so Fairway Circle. Okay. So, you know, I've, I've seen how people drive. I just, right. you know, if you put up a stop sign even like where you want it, what happens is, is those kids, when they stop, they're going to go faster from the stop sign to the next one. Yes. Well, that is one thing Craig shared with me. He says, you know, I, uh, let me share with you first the psychology behind traffic. Then I will the, let you know what when you solutions slow down, that we have to offer. Speed up to make up for yes. uh, perceived lost time. Yes. I will make one more thing, and I, I know I've taken up a lot of time. There's those that want to talk behind me. Um, Councilman Colby Fulford did, his neighbor that lives right, or a friend of his that lives right there off of Lakeview and Turner, the LaFers, requested a flashing sign of how fast you're going. And uh, they said they did put it on there. And I also talked to Tara and her husband that live across the street from that. They said it was there for about a week, but there was no follow through or communication as to what information did you gather it was there for just a short period of time and what i would like is communication 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 please follow up with me give me the information if it's no it's no but this is the alternative if it's yes this is what we're going to do it's it's when we don't get anything back any feedback misperceptions and frustrations and then bad attitudes start taking hold. I don't want that. Right. I want them to think well of all of us because we all live here together. So that's do, all I have to do say. Do you know when that uh, speed, the flashing speed sign was put up by chance? Um, I'll have to get back with you on that and I will okay. ask them because, you know, that was one of the possibilities of putting up one of those signs off of Turner to let people know. And Craig laughed, he says, yeah, that just gives him an incentive to go even faster. You know, wow, man, I did 70. I'm gonna see if I can go 75 and we'll off they too. go. So he says, this is, this is what we're facing. Um, I said, so what can mitigate this? Mm -hmm. what, what can we do? And that's where we are asking you, what can we do to protect the lives of our citizens? And I appreciate the, the feedback and the comments. Thank you for presenting. Good to know about a stop sign. Mm -hmm. We didn't know that. Thank you. But again, with the uh, counters and everything that uh, we have currently on, on, on a list, this will be put on a list for it. So uh, as soon as we get the data, we will send it out and uh, we'll follow up with everyone here during our minutes discussion after the end of every traffic committee we go over the previous month's uh, minutes or if there's anything else that's popped up we go over those minutes those will be sent out to you okay thank so, you thank you very thank much you The next item on the agenda is uh, speeding in the Belmont neighborhood by Hannah Lee Howell which I don't think she's here um, the next is discussion of speeding along Commons Avenue by Brandon Cobbler. Is Brandon here? Nope. Okay. Um, speeding between Turner and Lakeview, which we kind of already, already hit on by. Okay. All right. Um, discussion of speeding and a request for additional speed limit signage on New Hope Road between 56 and 112. Is there anybody here for that item? Okay, seeing none. Uh, discussion of speeding on Candy Apple and request for speed limit signs by Rainer Karschmer.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, sounds like Springdale's got a major speeding problem. It's, uh, it's all collected in this month's agenda yeah. pretty much. We haven't seen it, it like this in quite some time. Well, I, ju I just moved to Springdale about six, seven months ago, and I moved on Candy Apple. And I was shocked and at all the high speeders going up and down Candy Apple. And I'm trying to figure out what to do about it. I called the police department about four or five times. Uh, they came out once, and one of the officers said they got better things to do than park out there and catch speeders. I called the school district five times because we even got school buses speeding up and down Candy Apple. And I'm not talking five, ten miles over the speed limit. I'm talking twice the speed limit, at least, some even worse. Uh, we only have one speed limit sign, and that's right in, for, uh, right in front before you get into the neighborhood. That's it. No more caution children playing. Uh, there's a lot of little kids out there walking their dogs, riding their bicycles after school. And we even got school buses speeding. Of all people, you think they would have enough sense. But uh, I like to see something done. Someone suggested the uh, signal uh, speed reader. I don't, I don't see how that's going to help. Uh, people are disregarding the speed limit sign, the one and only. So I wanted to suggest about putting some putting up some stop signs. There's absolutely no stop signs, no yield signs, nothing. So that's what I wanted to come by and suggest, if we can get that done anyway. Okay. You know, maybe a three-way three stop sign at some corners, I don't know. I, I understand. Um, this sounds like something, again, we'll have to do our speed counts for and see what the average speed is going through there. Uh, I did kind of look at this before the meeting. Uh, you're right, there was a speed limit sign just as you enter the neighborhood yeah. up here. Right, that's the only one. <laughs> However, not one on the other side? Uh, oh, over here there's one too, yeah. Okay. And, it, and they both say speed limit 25 miles an hour throughout subdivision. Yeah, that's... I, is it typical that they're that far back? Because people are gaining speed in this section without any signage. I don't know if that'll fix it, but having it to where it's right as you uh, come off of Robinson, I they're aware. It. Wait, I it's just four blocks long, and they're. I mean, man. I can I can take a look and see if I can move them back closer to Robinson. Okay. I don't remember why they were, you know, it's probably been so long since that subdivision was built that why they were put up where they were. But mm -hmm. maybe we just assume people won't drive 50 miles an hour in a four-block section. Yeah. And I don't know if that's part of it. If they don't see a speed limit, so they pick up speed by the time they get to that first intersection, it's too late to slow down. But they can see it. But yeah, they, well, as soon as, as soon as they turn off a of 412, they floor it. They just downright floor it to get okay. all the way down to the end. And I called on this one vehicle because he had to be doing at least 65, 70 by the time he got down to the end. And the police came out and they found him and they ended, uh, ended up arresting three of the people that lived in the house with them. Um, but uh, I was told they were going to uh, up the patrol, and that was two weeks ago, and I haven't seen nothing, nothing done. Okay. And the school buses, are they're not doing anything. <laughs> right. So. And again, I, I, I can understand school buses, but I'll ask the question, is there a specific time besides no, all day rush long, hour? Morning to evening. Mornings and evenings? Okay. And now, I don't know if you can meet with the school district try to convince them they need to slow down their buses. Yeah. I mean, he was just up there. He is oh. right there. <laughs> so perfect timing. But, yeah. but uh, yeah, we'll we'll put this on the list to have All a right. speed trailer uh, run out the, there and we'll record the speeds and see what uh, yeah. 
people are going. We usually have that up for about two weeks, one yeah. to two weeks typically for a section so we can get a full week's worth of data at yeah. that time. So once well, we do I that. I just want to see what you guys can help, help with because like I said, there's a lot of little children out there walking their dogs and uh, riding their bicycles. And these cars don't care. They just zoom right on by them. Mm -hmm. They don't even slow down for them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we probably won't add any more speed limit signs. If they're not going to pay attention to the first no. one, they're not going to pay attention to the second Well, that's why I suggest a stop sign here and there. <laughs> Again. There is there's just no way you could even put a stop sign on Candy Apple. Where would there would be just absolutely no reason to stop it? There's traffic only tees off on it, right? We put it. We put stop signs on the non-dominant leg of a T intersection, but really, no, 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 straight rarely, through, yeah. never on a straight. Well, about slow down, children playing. I never put those signs up. You know, there, there's not one in the city of Springdale. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> it, well, there's reasons. Uh, they they uh, give parents and children a false sense of security. You, if I put up that sign, you're gonna think, or the children are gonna think, cars are watching out for them, no. and they're not. And they're not going to when I put up that sign. And there's a whole bunch of other reasons we don't put those signs up. But, uh, well, what, what about getting the police department to step up, to park a car out there once in a while? I know you guys are super busy with other stuff. Yeah, we but, can control it and send people out there to do speed you know, enforcement. I mean, you can make a lot of money in a half a day. <laughs> We're not <laughs> you know, giving out tickets. The police department is not in the money-making business. We don't yeah. care well, I'm just anything <laughs> about money. That's not our, that's not our job yeah. to make money. It was, we do it to yeah. stop speeding issues. And there has been a limitation on uh, traffic enforcement because of COVID-19, but we're lifting some of those restrictions and speed enforcement. Yeah. What do you think best? Best all right. Well, whatever can be helped. <laughs> yeah. But we'll we'll still get the data for it, so we have it, and then we'll bring it up on a later traffic committee meeting and send you that right. data too. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Candy Apple. I don't know if they do the same thing on Apple Butter Street or not. It's the yeah, one on the other side. So they probably that's... come in on one side and come out the other. Yeah. All right, well, that uh, finishes out this month's uh, agenda items. Is there anybody else that would like to present any items that aren't on the agenda? Okay, hearing none, I think we have someone from uh, last month's meeting, so we will go ahead and pull the minutes from last month. I will address the rest of them as soon as we uh, address everyone who's here from the public. So. Can I make one more comment you get? Uh, yes, ma'am. I do want to say that law enforcement, when their cars are present, even parked in their own driveways, is a deterrent. And everybody in my area, we support law enforcement. So if you have your patrols out there, you don't even have to hide. In fact, don't hide to catch the speeders. Let your presence be known wherever you are. And let me tell you, it's like them having a heart attack when they see your, tri when they see your car. Um, so the more visible, the better for all of us. And I want to say thank you. Y'all are doing a great job. Thank, thank you for you your time. Much. Okay, um, we will go ahead and skip down to the traffic calming on Buckhead Avenue. Mr. Brandon, if you'd like to uh, go up and discuss that a little bit more. We do have some data for that that we've got recently. Yes, so. and the signs are still up. So Yes. Um, so I guess there's still some, and I'm kind of, I was trying to kind of look through the formulas. So let me ask you, after at least seeing the data that you have, what's, what's, the, what's your... In at least initial thought by looking at that information. I also went back because I've got a copy of the study that was done five years ago, or at least some of the data from that, and it actually looked pretty consistent. I was kind of just doing a just a real first glance comparison at it this morning, 
and it, it kind of I was kind of surprised the traffic counts looked about the same and I, I was thinking we'd see less traffic this year just because so many kids are doing virtual school and COVID and that sort of thing but I didn't really see if it's there it didn't really jump out at me but I'm interested to see what you guys think about the data that's been collected so far. From what we see, it is, uh, <laughs> you have 85th percentile speeds at 33 miles an hour, that's eight miles an hour over the posted speed limit. Yep. To me, that is pretty bad. You've got traffic getting up to about 500 cars a day. Mm -hmm. And looking at that with even our point system, I was discussing this with the uh, Director of Public Works, it looks like due to a technicality, uh, it actually does meet the, uh, it just about meets the level of actually doing something level three wise, okay. which I'll get back to in a minute. Okay. Do we know anything about the number of accidents on that street? Um, Are there accidents? I guess it depends on how you define accident. So for example, I, I've got cameras. So I tend to, if there's something that's out of place, I'll tend to catch something. So for example, one morning as I left, there was something in the middle of the street way down towards the east end. And I was like, what is that? Well, it turned out to be somebody's mailbox. I go back and review the footage and about two in the morning, somebody came through and mowed over a mailbox. Okay. There was probably alcohol involved. They certainly weren't speeding. They were doing about five miles an hour. So that's the kind of thing it probably, it probably has, was never reported. Um, that's fairly common. Um, I've lived in this house 12 years. The house is 18 years old. So all those houses were built about the same time in 2002. Um, so at that time when the, when the subdivision was built out, all of those mailboxes due to covenant had a consistent look, they were all the same. So if you go through now, mine is the original one. Um, but if you go through and you see mailboxes that look different than mine, it's because they've been mowed over at some point. <laughs> so those sorts of things, I don't know that they would ever get reported. There was, um, a woman who several years ago lost control and crashed into one of the houses on the street. Um, I'm sure that one got reported because she got some free accommodations uh, at, the, at, the, at, at the behest of the city over that deal. Um, so, I, but, uh, but as far as actual accidents, probably not. It's just really the traffic volume um, and, the, uh, and the speeding. And I, and I will say something that, that I think is probably kind of a deficiency in your formula is that a lot of the traffic volume is people, of course, cutting through, which, of course, at, we had a level one measure where they put in the no through traffic signs, which were ignored. And a lot of it is due to schools. We can definitely notice that in the summer and on breaks, the traffic is, is clearly diminished because, you know, George Junior High is at the end of the street. And then, of course, the elementary school is adjacent to it. And so I would say that, ironically, our speed score on your formula here is probably lowered somewhat by the fact that a lot of that traffic is in the morning and all it takes is a couple of people actually doing the speed limit and they've got cars backed up behind them so people who would otherwise speed don't have the opportunity to because they can't right. just due to the actual volume of traffic so um, that probably exposes a little bit of, a, of an unintended consequence of the way your formula is set up, at least how it applies to our particular situation. But if it meets that criteria, and I was looking at the level two and level three, if it, if it looks like it meets those criteria, I, I think we would certainly agree. Yeah. So I'm interested to know what, what is the next step here. Yeah, I'll discuss that in a minute. It looks like for speed, I know you've been coming here uh, or uh, questioning this for about three years now, so yeah. <laughs> quite some time. Uh, it did, from what I saw on the data, about a little over 50% of people were driving over a posted speed limit. So yep. that was something else to note. In the mornings, I do understand that, you know, if it's just too busy to even speed, that, that is a big concern. Um, something we discussed, because I think it might have been brought up a couple years ago. Let me pull that up on the map. Okay. was that due to the consideration that uh, for as long as this has been brought up and it is a continuous issue and the speed data reflects that, um, since this is the only local street that goes through, uh, the Director of Public Works and I were discussing this and wanted to bring up the possibility to the Traffic Committee of maybe putting a Knox box on Kennesaw to separate Palisades with Buckhead at this location right here. 
And I'm sorry, what were you gonna, what were you, what are you proposing or it's, considering? It's a gate with a Knox box, so that way emergency services can get through. So it's oh, not okay. a complete barrier, but it does stop the public from going through. Oh, okay. I know that was the, I'll say this, when my now ex neighbor, Corey Gayer, who lived at the corner of Kennesaw and Buckhead, that well, he actually wanted Kennesaw to be dead ended at Palisades. And that was kind of a big ask. Um, and he, and he's, he's my ex neighbor because I guess he got so fed up with it. He finally just said, I'm selling my house and I'm moving, which I, you know, we, we, I want to avoid that, but I would, I mean, that would obviously be, would it be less convenient for folks like us trying to get up to 265? Sure, but it would absolutely solve the traffic and the speeding problem. So I'm, I, yeah, I'm interested to see here what everybody has to say about that. Okay, that is an option that has been brought up, especially with this bond program. We're doing something similar on uh, Harbor and Angela, that there is the same type of thing. It would, the residents have brought up that it would become a cut through street between McRae and Harbor once Harbor's put in. Uh, it is a local street that would then be used almost as a minor collector in a non-grid based area. There's other places in town that do have cut through streets, but there are several locals in a row that make somewhat uh, make up somewhat of a grid. Mm -hmm. So no one flocks to one. We right. tend to send them to, to try to get them to go to the uh, minor collectors. In this case, this is the only cut through street between Don Tyson and uh, Robinson. Even to the west, there are no others between the two. This exists as a local that is being used as a minor collector. But I'll open this up to the traffic committee for discussion. And feel free, since the school uses this area too for bus routes, Alan, your input's more than welcome as well. Yeah, I believe there actually are a couple of bus stops. I don't have, my, my, my daughter doesn't ride the bus, but I believe there is one. Maybe it's on the corner of Buckhead and Kennesaw and then one that's in Palisades. Okay. They would just go around 265 into the... Because I believe, let's say, for example, if I had a 911 call that the fire department that would respond is up on 412 off to the east. So they would they would hit that gate and have to and have to be able to unlock the Knox box and go through it. Yeah. So and that takes time. That, that, do, that so. does take time. But, you know, there are no solutions, right? There are only trade offs. And part of our concern as residents is. A fire is one thing, maybe a car that has hit a kid is something else, and maybe we can prevent that 911 call in the first place. And, and to your point, it's going to be an inconvenience, and that's really part of the point. You're going to be inconvenient so that you now go down and use Don Tyson to cut through and get over to Powell instead of, instead of cutting through this neighborhood. So it will be an inconvenience um, to everybody, but, I mean, that's, like I said, that, that's, that's the trade-off. So. Okay. Yes. And that's typically one of the things that we get yelled at the most on the night of emergency is how long it takes to get there. So, again, that's one of the reasons that this community is spending $17 million on the fire station. Right. Yeah. If fire, the fire department and the police department, if they tell, if they come back and tell us that they don't have any issues with it, if the residents agree, we are going to need. Um, the residents to sign a petition and there has to be at least 75 percent of the residents that agree to this change that's okay. per our traffic calming policy. And, I, and i saw that in the policy so <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so that, that does bring up a question because the policy basically mentions something to the effect of, and I'm not looking at the exact language, um, something to the effect of impacted residents or something like that. So I guess the $64,000 question then becomes who would qualify as impacted residents? That's something we'll have to look at. Right. So there have been discussions of people along Buckhead, Palisades, those are the ones that are being affected, or everyone else in the subdivision too, because now their routes are impeded. Right. So, I mean, the people on Palisades, at least east of Kennesaw, see the volume. They don't really deal with speeders because Palisades at least has the little dog leg and there are cars parked on the side of the street. And I'm, you know, I, I use it frequently too. You can't see what's going on. So you have an incentive not to speed because you don't know when you go around the dog leg what's going to be on the other side of it. So right. uh, Buckhead, straight shot, they pull around. And even if there's cars parked on the side of the street, which I have one, um, as long as they can look down and they see nothing but George Jr. High at the end, it's game on. Um, so we're the only ones on Buckhead that actually see the speeding problem. If we expand this to the folks on Chateau in Oak Walk subdivision, which is to our south, and then the folks in Palisades, that becomes a much more difficult thing because especially if you live on Mueller or Fairfax or Nicholson in that subdivision, you have no incentive to say yes to the gate because you don't really see any of the problems and you're all you're doing is signing up for an inconvenience that now it's gonna make it tougher for you to go to the west. You're gonna to have to go out and go all the way down to Don Tyson. So right. I would say that if all of those folks are considered impacted, then we're there's no way we're ever gonna meet the 75% threshold and now we're back to square one. So I would I would uh, implore upon the committee to say, look, really the only people that that are impacted would be certainly on Buckhead to a lesser extent Palisades and for 75%, that's still gonna be potentially a really tough thing to to come up with. And so how does that, how does that happen? Do, the, do, we, do, we, do we have to get a petition and get people to sign off on that? Or how, do, how does that, from a, from, a, from a procedural perspective, how does that work? Once we decide what, uh, who, who is impacted, yes, it would be okay. the neighborhood's responsibility gotcha. to get the petition signed. Get, uh, we'll have to go over that and how that's gonna be set up. Uh, names, addresses, phone numbers, and emails. Um, okay. But right now, I don't think that we're, we can really make a decision on the who's impacted at sure. this time. Okay. Since discussions need to proceed with emergency services on this, we, we do have a little bit of time, but we'll most likely deliberate on it and, and see what we can do as far as who is impacted. Okay. So Since this is the first time we've <clears throat> experienced this right. in traffic committee. Okay. Um, and another thing to consider is if, if we deem that the gate is too problematic, can we, can we fall back to another measure like speed tables or speed humps or something like that, that people go, okay, well now I can at least go down. If you live in, if you live in the Palisade subdivision, now I can at least go down Buckhead, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be inconvenienced by the fact that I can't drive 60 miles an hour. So that would be something that takes further discussion. Okay. All, all those measures are on a case by case basis. Um, some things that need to be considered would have to be, I mean, with speed tables, we see people, yeah, they slow down and then they go over it, but then they floor they, it to they make, floor up, for it to make yeah. up for that last time. It's, so slower response by 911. Sure. That's, yeah, slower response. Uh, uh, issues with snow and ice removal and street maintenance issues that come up because it's a different material and everything and to replace it would be very costly. So these are the things that we have to consider along with that. Okay. We're, we would probably try to take another route besides those, maybe even something that's been tossed around is curb bump outs where the curve comes in a little bit to mm -hmm. narrow the road, street narrowing. That's something that's thrown around. But again, these are much more costly measures. Sure. So it's something that takes a lot more discussion and approval right. beyond and us. You know, we, we've got we've got vehicles parked on the street. My Jeep stays parked on the street. Um, and I'll be honest, I park it about as far away from the curb as I think I can get away with. And there have been, although I've called numerous times for, 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 for radar to be set up, I don't think that's really ever happened. But there have been 
three occasions in the last five or six years where there have been complaints logged on my vehicle parked on the street <laughs> by people coming and it's part it's legally parked yeah you're um, on a local but, you can park on that street right but people people complain uh the last one was pretty humorous they they somebody called and said this jeep is abandoned so you need to do something about it so uh, when the officer came to my door and he was chuckling and he said I got a call that your Jeep was abandoned, but the tags are current and it's parked in front of the residence that it's registered to. So I'm pretty sure, pretty sure it's not abandoned. I'm like, no, it stays out there. Even if I had room to park it in the driveway, I wouldn't because it slows people down. You're so, right. Um, You're right. It, and so it, it it's, uh, that's our, that's our, that's, and that, and that's, and that's one of the things that helps when school is in session because it, it creates a choke point and traffic has to stop going one way or the other to let other traffic through. So we've done that on purpose. So, but anyway, I'm interested. I will kind of, I'll keep in touch with, with, uh, with Matt. I've got Megan's email. I'll keep in touch and, and probably we'll continue this discussion at the next, at the next month's committee meeting. Sure. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Now that we've addressed all public concerns, we can go with <laughs> start again at, uh, for people who aren't weren't, weren't here uh starting with no outlet sign at jaeger road for miss autry let's see here just dead ends now that's kind of yeah. off of gibbs road that's really not anything out there can go down there it, yeah we'll, put, to be we'll put one up just a little yeah on the street sign yep okay solves that one request for no truck sign at the corner of apple meadows and old wire road guess they're using that as they cut through they're taking the wrong turn okay. they're turning on apple meadows instead of apple blossom <laughs> wait Interesting. i think there's already oh uh, there's not already no truck signs there mm -mm. okay that was bevel heights before right yeah. right okay i don't know if i can see anything even see that one on my list that's because this has changed multiple times oh, okay well i'll write it down <laughs> i hated to let them sit for a month when they were one day away from the meeting so i just piled them in here okay install no trucks and it's just from all wired at apple meadows because that's correct what their name confusion okay there's a like a street watch sign there too so uh yeah neighborhood watch yeah all right yeah we can get on that problem okay let's see cross cross traffic signage at dodd by okay dodd and it's Byer. that road over there by bayari right um, okay so scott's yeah, that one. This is the one I emailed to you, Eric, earlier in the month. They want to cross really traffic to does not one. stop. But I, mean, I could put it up if you guys want me to. We don't typically put those up on stop signs. I mean, when you come to a... Whoa. Well... You come to a T intersection like that, you ought to assume cross traffic doesn't stop. That's what confuses me and I don't know how much traffic was going to the east going or coming from the east to very little a few houses up there maybe five or so warrant that but when you emailed to me I went and looked I'm just like it's a it's a T intersection yeah she says there's a lot of near misses but it could be people just rolling that stop sign probably it, a sign's not going to stop them from rolling you, it. Yeah, you ought to know. Yeah. 
you ought to know that cross traffic doesn't stop without a sign for that. But Is there I don't any have one, but I can make one and put it up if you guys want. Is there any issues on sight distance around that corner? See a pole? Not really. I, depending on the imagery, I saw a sign. There's a sign over here. It says dead end. But I would think most of the new. people coming there would be turning right onto Bayari. Yeah. My thoughts too. The largest majority of them. Does anybody see any issue with not putting one up until we get further information and clarification? Because I don't, if it's not typical, I don't see a need to do it at this time. Yes, it's, we don't, we might have one or two out in the whole city of Springdale. But it's usually somewhere that is next to a highway? It's Maybe. usually somewhere, yeah. Like, uh, uh, I think the one I can think of is uh, over there by the, what's the, the road that runs next to the swimming pool and comes up to McCray. Talking about Pleasant? Or, uh, Pleasant? Ple no. By the swimming pool? The one with the Talking offset stop time? signs? Huh? Wait, no. Yeah, uh, it's I, offset. But, well, it has the, cur has the yield sign that curves off of McCray. Oh, you're talking about the other yeah, that neighborhood yeah, off there. Uh, yeah, one more block. So that, I don't know if it still does. It used to have a cross traffic does not stop right there. Like if you left the, uh, not the four that are offset, but going up, uh, going west one more block to McCray. Okay. So if you were sitting there facing west, you're looking at, M at McCray, and then uh, to your right, or to your left would be uh Somewhere over there by Maria and Janet, but I can't think the name of it. I think it's somewhere over there. Where the block? There's Susan's. Where? Uh, Watson. Watts, oh, not McCray. Watson and West End. Oh, okay. Watson and West End is the only, and that used to have a cross traffic that does not stop right there on Watson as you're looking at West End. Okay. I don't know if it's still there or not, but that's the only place I can think of in town that's ever had one. Okay. And that's because that fence, that fence there, and I think it was probably a... Uh, probably when they redid the road. Yeah, probably when yeah. they redid the road, like yeah. It. When it's a new traffic yeah. situation, yeah. that makes sense. Okay. But in this case, that's been there for, I don't know how long. Longer John than I've got, yeah, more deal. than 16 years. Okay. Until we get any further information, no action taken. Um, request for additional no parking signage along Shipley south of Sunset and 412. I went and looked south at that. South of Sunset, yeah. Yeah, I went and looked at for the meeting. Uh, the reason there's no no parking signs there now is because there's it's right at that corner of uh, Sunset, and there's businesses right there. And then I don't know why they want them down. Who's who's the other girl that works in engineering back in the across from your office? Katie. I talked to her about it when they when we got the call, and you were out that day, and uh, she said there was no reason to have no parking on there because it's a residential road. And there was, you know, she looked back, uh, back to 2013. It's always, always allowed parking. So I just forgot about it since then. But if you go to the corner where Sunset is, uh, there are three of them: one on the east side and two on the west side, because those are businesses right businesses. there. Yep, right there, right there, and right there. Okay. So this came from Jim Reed because there was parking on both sides of the street multiple days in a row and school buses couldn't get through. Oh. The police had to be dispatched to move the cars so the buses could get the kids through there. Well, um, that's right. Uh, that is pretty narrow. Yep. For our master street plan, we would not. 24 feet, I think we had a 26 feet, somewhere around there. We had a similar situation on Gene Street, I believe, where we put no parking down one side of the road for that exact reason. 
because traffic can't get through if it's on both sides. So seeing that, is there any issues with putting no parking on one side of the street? What side do you want it on? That's the question. Did the person or did Jim have any preference? He did hold that thought to my email. Because we have, we've got one if he doesn't. Um, the, the no parking preference is on the east side. East side. Yep, no parking on the east side of Shipley, south of Sunset, near the Friesen store. I guess I can ask, is there any issues with that? Or I typically defer to emergency services and which side of the street they are entering from and the no parking is on that side, which they're traveling. Mostly that's probably the wrong side. And that'd be west. You make this decision. He just said that was his preference, but I told him that emergency services ultimately makes that decision. Okay. It doesn't make a difference for the police department because our call is big like the fire truck, so. Okay. Since fire's coming off sunset, let's make it the west, west side. side. No parking. Uh, discussion of traffic signals at Don Tyson and 48th Street and Don Tyson and the interstate northbound exit. That, I don't know. About the lights not timing the sun. It is. Yes. And then Kurt sent back an email. Okay, good to me after I sent it early so he could take a look at it. And he said he reviewed the logs and nothing seems out of place. He said it tried to look, it looks really good. He's trying to lag the left turns throughout the day to see if they get any complaints on the operation of, you know, lagging the left turn. He said he's been lagging them through the morning and afternoon and evening rush hour anyway. It may cut down the wait times if, if the through movements, the left turns will be served as permissive but they will not get a straight green light at the end of the cycle. He said, you know, it may f make left turners feel like they're being passed over, but he said he's gonna give it a shot to see if we've received any complaints. And as of today, I haven't received any complaint. Okay. And he's doing what he can to make sure there's no backlog of that left turn. Right. And he, he said he looked, he looked over the complaint. He looked at that left turn and he said, you know, I haven't, I haven't seen very many people being stuck in the through traffic because the left turns triggered, but he's going to go ahead and lag it anyway to see if that helps with this issue here. Okay. All right. I've not heard anything back from okay. the gentleman that sent in the complaint. All right. Let's have it in the minutes that uh, exactly what you just explained. Uh, discussion of speeding on the rest of these. Maple Drive, Belmont Neighborhood, uh, Commons Avenue, and New Hope Road between 56th Street and 112. These we can have on the list going forward for the speed trailers. If we just wanna have them on the list in this order, if there's any arguments against that, just, uh, let me know. Um, for most of these, they did have detailed emails, which will be in the minutes. Uh, we will work toward figuring out what type of speeding is going on. Um, for most of these, Belmont and Commons are both in a subdivision, no cut throughs. Um, Maple Drive is. Like I said before, it's on a grid-based system, has several stops down the way. One of the long segments has a curve in it, which typically slows down traffic. And the only other section I think they're speeding, might be speeding on is a uh, one-fifth mile stretch uh, to the far south. But Maple doesn't make a whole lot of... Maple Drive, yeah. It's, 
and by the time you get to downtown, it's stop sign after stop sign. I don't think there'd be anywhere to put up a speed trail in it. Right. Okay. Do we have an email for that one? That one came from Amelia Williams. Okay. All right. We'll still have it on the list. Um, the only other one, like I said, the other two are subdivisions. Uh, New Hope Road. I understand that is an issue. There are speed limit signs, both from 112 and from 56th Street as you're going onto New Hope, They're both 25 mile an hour. Um, there is a long-term solution for that whenever Don Tyson Parkway actually extends through. Should help alleviate quite a bit of the traffic from there. I understand that's a long time away, but that is something that we have right now. We'll still stick the speed trailer out there to get data on it regardless. Um, that covers everything from this meeting and we'll go through the rest of the previous meeting minutes. Uh, Stoltz and Robbins T intersection has that been completed to make Stoltz uh, from the southbound Stoltz into a stop and right oh Southbound. No, no, no. Robbins, Robbins. Robbins, Robbins we were going to make it a T intersection, but we can't do it until they make, do the construction work on it. Okay. Because we it's super elevated. To do that. that road's a curve. It, Robbins comes down and curves into Stoltz. Uh, right. And we need, uh, you know, it's, I don't, wouldn't know how to, I mean, I could, guess I could just put a stop sign there. It'd be kind of weird, though. Okay. It's not a. You wouldn't make a left turn. That's what I was, when I brought that up last month, it was making that an actual T intersection. Okay. So we- we'll have to take out the curve. We approved it, yeah. Now uh, they've got to go take out the road, make it a T. It's on the list. <laughs> it's okay. on, yeah, it's on James's list. All right, okay, sounds good. Uh, Buckhead, we discussed that. Uh, remove access road from, at Highway 264, removing a portion of old wire because it was recently relocated to the new Old Missouri that has been submitted to Council, I believe. To Councilman Evans. Councilman Evans, okay. For their discussion and approval. Um, discussion of street parking signs in the Bethel Heights annexed area. We'll be replacing those signs. Has that been started or we, we did some of them we got there's a lot to do and oh, yeah. it's been busy so um brad said you know we're not gonna wait till next year I'm out, I'm out of money in my budget anyway so okay ongoing so that covers everything from the agenda and minutes today is there anything else anyone would like to bring up to discuss Hearing none, then I motion to adjourn. Thank you all very much.